Moose to Pole, Malayang Padating Sa Philippines. My name is uh, Frank Williams. My wife and I are missionaries of God the Father, the Almighty Maker and Possessor of Heaven and Earth, and uh, Jesus Christ, His Son. I uh, want to welcome you to the uh, Philippines, and this is our mission house, and uh, we're going to brag on Jesus Christ. It's what we do as missionaries. Jesus told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he tells us in verse 17, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 17, that these signs shall follow those that believe, those who brag on Jesus. This wasn't the uh, teaching of a pastor or a, or a prophet. These, this was a promise from Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that if we go and we brag on Jesus, these signs shall follow. Jesus has continued to fulfill his word. It comes to pass every day. He continues his word. He keeps his promise every day. Uh, the anointing, the uh, his anointing continues to flow and has continued to flow since the resurrection day the very first resurrection day the day when he rose again that uh, he's continued to keep that promise every day the unction the unction of the anointing continues to flow for his children every day it's so prolific that many times we as believers forget to give him honor, forget to give him thanks for the things that he does for us. He does it every day. So prolific that we his children forget to even notice what he has done and how he has kept his word. We forget to give him praise. We forget to even give him credit for the work that he does. Today, we're going to uh, study a little bit the prayer of Elisha. Yes, you've heard of Elijah the prophet. We're going to talk about a prayer of Elisha the prophet. Elisha was the protege. He was trained by Elijah the prophet. And this historical account is found in 2 Kings chapter 6. So I'm going to give you time to turn there. Uh, and while you're turning there, we want to take time to pray. We want to uh, welcome you. We want to uh, uh, welcome you to our mission house, to this Bible study and this prayer time. And we're going to get into a part of the Old Testament, a historical account that uh, too often the uh, children of God today are not familiar with this prayer. And Jesus tells us that the wise, they take, take these teachings and they apply them right away to their lives. And those who do that, 
uh, Jesus tells us are wise. There are others who think that they are smarter than God, that God's word does not apply to them. And so in their wisdom, they delay how they implement the word of God in their lives because they don't believe that the word of God is speaking to them. It might be speaking to you, it might be speaking to their neighbor, to their wife, to that one sitting uh, two or three rows up, but uh, somehow they don't think the Word of God applies to them. So let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who join us uh, even now. We thank you for those who are joining us in the Bible study and prayer time from from uh, the Western Hemisphere. We thank you, Father, for our friends in on the island of Cuba. We thank you for Pablo, Pedro, and we thank you for Odell. We thank you for Samuel. We thank you for your people in Cuba, our friends. Can't list all of them. We uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, Chino, uh, Pastor Chino. We thank you for our uh, friend, uh, Pastor Raphael. We thank you for our friends in Camaway. Yes, our friends in Camaway, those in Havana. We thank you for those. And we thank you for our friends that join us here in Southeast Asia, here in the Philippines. We thank you for our friends in uh, Hooligan, that area of Tanza. Uh, we thank you for our friends over in uh, Naik, Hillsview, Subdivision uh, uh, Phase 2. We thank you for our friends uh, in Cavite, some in uh, General Trios, over, uh, we thank you for our friends and Tracy Martires. We thank you uh, for our friends in Calaocan. We thank you, Father, for our friends in Las Penas and uh, other areas of we thank you for our friends that uh, watch from Mindanao over the various 7,430 plus islands of the communities, the several different uh, communities, several different barangay. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you continue to allow the unction of the anointing to flow through your veins to your mercy and your passion to continue to be poured out upon your children who brag upon you. We thank you because we know as your children that God our Father is a good God. In Him is light. There is no darkness at all. God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil. We thank you that all good things from come from God and all bad things come from the devil. We thank you, Father, that uh, you give to your children weapons that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds through the uh, uh, anointing, the blessing of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, 
we know that uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood or against human beings, but against principalities, powers, the rulers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And that, Father God, in this spiritual warfare, you have not given us earthly weapons, but weapons that are heavenly. They are given through the power of the Holy Ghost. And you have given us authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy. You've given us authority in your spoken word. It comes from Jesus Christ, your son. You've given us the privilege to come boldly before your throne uh, where we can obtain mercy and grace in time of need. We thank you, Father, that you never leave us you never forsake us. We thank us, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that you have all power, that you have all knowledge, and you are ever uh, omnipresent. Your presence can be felt anywhere, anywhere. And Lord, we thank you that you know everything. There is nothing hidden from you. And that all power belongs to you. And you give us authority to use that through Jesus Christ, your son. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that your kingdom come, your will would be done more and more in our individual lives today. We pray that your kingdom come, more knowledge of you and of your kingdom would come and that we would allow your will to be done in our lives as it is in heaven. We thank you that you give us this day our daily bread. Lord, that you forgive us of our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. We thank you that you don't tempt your children with evil and that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. Lord, we thank you that you enjoy giving good things to your children according to Luke chapter 11 even the Holy Ghost to those who ask Lord help the scripture help us to see what you want us to see in the Word of God to apply it to our lives right away because we love your word and we love to apply it to our lives today because wisdom comes from God. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God and you provide it in abundance. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, amen. We've got uh, a, a busy week preparing for the weekend. And again, on the first day of the week, we will be in Naik. The first day of the week, and we're going to start in Naik at the... Uh, Christ, the Strong Foundation Church in Hillsview uh, Subdivision, uh, Phase 2. Phase 2. So if you have 
any uh, questions or knowledge or want uh, directions to that church if you're in that local area that uh, you can uh, look us up on Facebook Christ or CSF Naik Hillsview subdivision uh, phase two uh, again we are in the book of second kings second kings chapter six and we are reading from god's word the historical account the documents with regard to elisha's prayer elisha was a, a man of god he was a prophet he was a protege of elijah elisha was his replacement the one who took his office who uh, who began to train the prophets in his area we're going to start in verse 8, uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. He went to war with the kingdom of Israel and took uh, counsel with his servants, with his generals, with his military leaders. And they would uh, make plans to attack the children of God. And it says in verse 9, And the man of God, this would be Elisha, he would, uh, he would send knowledge and warnings to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you send not your people to such a place for there the Syrians are going to attack you they're going to attack your army and the king of Israel sent word to the place which the man of God warned him about and saved himself there or saved himself saved his army there not just once nor twice but on many occasions he was able to sing warning to his armies and his military to be aware of the ambush or the attack uh, that was uh, arrayed against his uh, army the uh, army of the king of Syria Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was troubled, very sore troubled. In fact, he uh, began to believe that he had a spy in his midst. And the king of Israel received warning from Elisha warning about the attack verse 12 and one of his servants said none or you have no spies your honor O king uh, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel a man of God in Israel, he uh, he hears everything that is spoken. The Bible gives tells us he has revelation. We does the Bible doesn't tell us how he received the revelation, but it's obvious the revelation was from God, and he says. None, my lord, O king, 
um, Elisha, the prophet, or the man of God, that is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedchamber. The God of Israel reveals to Elisha the prophet everything that you say in private is revealed to him. And he said, the king said, uh, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. Where, In other words, he's saying, where is he? We want to kidnap him. I want to have a word with this man of God. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Not Dothan, Alabama. I know that there are people who may be watching in Dothan, Alabama. But he's not talking about Dothan, Alabama. I'm sure you have men and women of God in Dothan, Alabama. But this is not your hometown. Um, therefore... He sent there horses and chariots and a great host. He sent part of his military to go and fetch Elisha. And they came by night and they surrounded the city of Dothan. Totally surrounded. Therefore... When the servant of the man of God, or his protege, got up early in the morning and went outside, behold, an army surrounded the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant, his protege, said unto him, Master, what are we going to do? Or teacher, what are we going to do? And he answered, Elisha, the man of God, told his protege, Fear not, for they that be with us are more then be with them. We have them outnumbered. In the physical, his protege was out to look and he could see that they were totally surrounded, completely outnumbered, overwhelming odds. What shall we do? And he answered, the man of God responded, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha began to pray. And we, the people of God, we need to learn from this prayer. You see, it was all right. Elisha had the authority to pray this way. And the children of God today, you still have the authority from God to pray in this way. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open 
his eyes, the eyes of his protege. Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord open the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray you, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. See, as a man or woman of God, Jesus frequently told those that made request of him, he would say, let it be done according to your faith. The words of Jesus, let it be done according to your faith. So we have the approval of the Son of God that when we are surrounded by overwhelming odds, when it seems like everything is stacked against us. When it looks like that there is no way that we can be victorious, we can learn from Elisha. And we can use this pattern and method of prayer. Father God, I pray that you throw the opposition to your people to throw them in absolute confusion. Lord, we uh, pray that they act in absolute foolish ways. That those things that they plot against the children of God, that you would turn it around for good for those who love you and who are called according to your purposes. Yes, we can pray, we can ask that our Father would turn around, and you should do that every day, every plot, every device that the opponents of God the Father, that they have against the people of God, we can ask our Father, to turn it around for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purposes. Aren't you one of those people? Aren't you called for the Lord according to His purposes? Then you qualify for this prayer Father, turn around the plans for evil against your people. And Father God, we ask today that you turn it around for good. For those who love you and are called according to your purposes. If they have evil planned for your people, we ask Father God to to render them spiritually blind and blind enough to step into the traps that they've designed for the people of God. That if they de de design and plan evil for the people of God, that the evil the opponents of God that they would step into their own traps, that they would fall for their own uh, efforts to deceive, that they would deceive themselves and vulnerable to the will of God. So, the Lord 
did just that. And it says in verse 17, And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes that he may see. And the eye, Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down, the opponents of God came down to him. Elisha prayed unto the Lord, Smite this people, I pray, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. We have authority to ask God to blind the eyes of those who have evil schemes and plots against the people of God. That what the evil that they've planned for others, we can ask that this would happen to those who plot against the good of the people of God. In uh, 19, And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. Yes, the opponents of God and his people were led by Elisha himself. And he led them back into Samaria. And it uh, came to pass... When they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. He opened up their eyes, and they were back where they started. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, he says, Shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Shall I kill them? Can I kill them? And he answered, uh, You cannot smite them. You cannot kill them. Do you uh, want it to be known that the children of God kill their prisoners of war? Give them bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go home to their master. And he prepared great provision, a great banquet, plenty to eat for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And they went to their master, went back to their king. So the bands of Syria came no more unto the land of Israel. The Lord delivered his children from those who wanted to do great harm to them. But he gave the instructions that the people were to be fed take care of their hunger, 
and give them, be generous to them, give them to drink, and send them back unharmed. As we brag on Jesus, we brag on Jesus so people can know about him. We want to testify from what we have seen Jesus do for us so that they will see what he has done for us and say, wow, if the Lord will do it for this one here, he's far from perfect. I've, I know him. He hasn't always been a godly man. You should see the wicked things that he's done in the past. And if God is willing to forgive him of what he's done in the past, maybe that same God will have mercy on me. And if he can use him, maybe he will accept me as one of his children too. Maybe he will use me as he has used them. And brothers and sisters, this is the gospel. We have the authority to ask God to change the minds of those in opposition to him. We know that God has commanded, God our Father has commanded that his light should show, uh, shine forth out of darkness. God has commanded, yes, take you to that scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Turning there right now so that you too have time to turn there so you can see it for yourselves. I always recommend that you take a copy of the Word of God to church with you. Don't use your smartphone unless you absolutely have to because if you're using your smartphone people will see you and they won't see what you're reading. They'll say, well, he must be checking his profile on TikTok or on Facebook. I encourage you to get a copy of the Bible and take it with you so you can follow along. But it says that uh, God has commanded the light to shine out of darkness to shine in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure in earthen vessels or clay pots. Clay pots that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Brothers and sisters, he tells us in verse 3 that if our gospel it is if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We know that there are some 
who don't understand because your eyes have been blinded by Satan. He has blinded your eyes. We're going to pray right now that the scales fall from your eyes so that you can see the glorious good news that is available to you through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and there is none righteous, no, not one. Jesus tells us, tells Nicodemus, you must be born again. Your old man, the old heart needs to be to be crucified with Christ and resurrected. And Jesus Christ resurrected as a new spirit man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Father God, we pray for all who view and those who have a desire to be reborn, to let the old personality die and to be resurrected in the Spirit, to be born again brand new, to become a new creation. Lord, I pray that those who want to start new would cry out to you in faith, Father, remove the scales that block their eyes their spiritual eyes from seeing. Help them today to be born again, to be resurrected by your Spirit, that they be brand new, be born again, to grow and to be more like Jesus, your Son. Lord, that they learn every day more about their rights at a, as a citizen of heaven even in this fallen sinful world father to learn more about being a citizen of your kingdom and father god that today that uh, your will would be done in our lives today just as it is in heaven. We want to belong to you. We want to grow in you. We want to learn from your word who your word says we are. And Lord, that uh, you've told us that uh, we have not because we ask not. And other times we ask outside of the will of God for our lives. Father, help us to associate with good teachers, good preachers, that uh, we would rightfully... Learn the word of truth from the scripture. We thank you. Help us every single day as we seek to walk in your ways and to follow in your footsteps. We thank you for the miracles that you do. Help us to pay more attention to what you do for us so that we give praise unto your name. That we give you praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we ask. Amen. 
we're in the middle of the week I want to say hello to those of you who are faithful who remember as the Lord speaks to you to send what God speaks to you and it helps us to pay the bills we thank you for that we know that uh, some have not yet uh, heard from God but that you would hear from God and send in as the Lord speaks to you your best today this would be a good time to send it for uh, many of you God willing we will see you again tomorrow hasta manana see you again tomorrow and wherever you go that God's blessing be upon you Dios Libendega and uh, to those that you have some travel uh, to do big or small whatever you have to do uh, via Kindios take the Lord with you in everything that you do in every place that you go we'll see you soon we're praying for you have a great day